Hey fellow investors, lately I'm getting more and more people that start to follow me that are new to investing. A common question which I receive is how to get started and how to build up your own retirement portfolio. This is the reason why I decided to create a small series of videos actually focused on the beginners in which I will try to answer these questions a bit more in depth. I'm already for six years on the journey of dividend investing and my portfolio grew to over 100k. It was no rocket science and I will show you how in this series of videos. In this first video, I'm going to show you how to retire early with dividend stocks. But before we get into it, this channel is all about early retirement and dividend investing. If you want to stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the button below this video and hit the notification bell. It will also help me in growing this channel. Let's get started. There are many reasons why someone would like to retire early. For many people, it is the freedom of mind, the freedom of choice, not, not needing to go to work every day at 6 a.m. and just to actually to break the routine and to break the grind. For me personally, it has also been a combination of looking forward in the IT market. If I looked at the financial crisis that happened in 2008 and my colleagues that were 50 plus, it was really, really hard for them to still find a job. I'm already almost 40. So in my opinion, if I would get fired in, let's say, 10, 15 years from now, I might have a, really an issue finding a job just because of the age biases that exist in society. Because many, many managers will think about themselves, specifically in the younger workforce, it's like who wants an older guy who's 50 plus uh, when I might benefit from a developer who's just 20 or in the early 20s. So I don't want to be in a situation then that I'm really depending on my salary and that my dreams will collapse because of not finding a job because of certain biases. Of course, I'm going to invest in my education. I'm continuously learning. I'm continuously training myself. But, you know, it doesn't give me a comfortable feeling. And if we now also look at, for instance, uh, what COVID-19 has done, COVID-19 as well, and, and, and you see it here in, in the UK, for instance, the biggest percentage of all age groups and significantly more than the national average increase of 24% was by people that got unemployed over 50. It will be really hard for these people to find a job again. Uh, the article further mentions also, for instance, that their salar salaries are quite uh, high or demanding, uh, and, and rightly so, because you come with a lot of experience, but you're at that moment, you're competing with a youngster. So these are all real issues. At the same time, we're also struggling in Europe because we're getting older, we are getting more healthy. And what that leads to is that over the last years, we can see that our retirement ages have been just growing. They've been pushed forward and pushed forward. So if you would have retired in 2015 at 65, but now look at my age. Um, I started, let's say, working in 2005. So I'm likely to retire around 2055. So according to this, just this simple math, I would, I would need to retire when I'm 70. I don't want to retire when I'm 70. It's not something that I want. And this is what we are seeing. It's a gliding scale. Uh, society is getting older. Society is staying healthier. It's unsustainable. The European system is how we have it when it comes to retirement. And it even gets worse. Because if we look at, for instance, the Dutch indexing of pensions, over the last decade, there was only a, a, a one-time 0,28% hike in pensions. But look at the inflation because this is their indexation ambition. But if you look at this, this is closely related to inflation. Over the last decade, they have missed out on indexation around 20%. 20% less value is waiting for us in retirement. And this, this is the same for me because I've been building up my retirement in the Netherlands in the beginning of my career. And for what I was saving and what I was promised back in 2009, I'm missing out on probably around 20% of, of what was promised to me. And this, uh, this has to do a lot with how the pension system has been built up. I don't want to go too deep into that, but these are for me some of the problems that makes me really want to focus on early retirement and take the power in my own hands. So luckily, there are a few solutions that can help us to retire early. And the first one is actually quite simple. Spend less than you earn and save as much as you can. And the difference between what you, for instance, make as money as your income from your salary and 
the expenses that you have is what we call the savings rate. And this one will be a really important factor to define how long it will take for you to retire early. And secondly, you will need to invest those savings into income producing assets. These income producing assets are going to give you passive income and preferably increase over time. So when I started to look for solutions that could generate me this passive income, I found dividend growth investing. You could also invest in real estate or use the four person rule by investing in other kinds of stocks. But I found dividend growth investing most fit to my personality. And I will introduce dividend growth investing to you now. So what does this mean? What is dividend growth investing? So with dividend growth investing, you're effectively using dividend income to pay for your expenses in retirement. And uh, the, the most wonderful thing here is something what we call compound interest. And also Albert Einstein has referred to it. At least they say that it was Albert Einstein, it's not sure. But compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. Think about that because it's really, really, really valuable here. And what it really means is that you use your dividends that you come while you're in the accumulation phase. So let's say that it takes you 15 years to build up an income from dividends, which would cover your expenses. During that time, those 15 years, you don't need those dividends yet. So you reinvest them. And this is what they also call the snowball. And this is also where you, you will see exponential growth in your um, dividend income and it's difficult the first six seven years you will not really notice a lot the dividends that you will be getting are slow but consistently reinvesting them will really really start showing you this exponential growth and later in the video i will show you how that looks like what is also dividend growth investing is investing in dividend companies or, or dividend paying companies that are aiming and intending to grow their dividends year over year so at the same time, when you're creating passive income in dividends, let's say 1000 uh, euro per month now, if a company increases the dividend, let's say by 6% six, uh, six next year, you will get 1060 euro per month. And then 6% on top of that and 6% on top of that. So if you start living, let's say of 1000 euros a month, you will have every year, you will have a salary hike of around 6% per year. I mean... This is not something what you will really see easily in the real estate. You cannot just hike your your, your tenants um, uh, rent year over year with 6%. With the 4% rule as well, your returns will be probably lower because you will uh, likely have a really defensive uh, portfolio. And here uh, with dividend growth investing, you have the, the opportunity to keep paying yourself or that the companies will keep paying you salary increase without even working for them anymore. Now, this is for me one of the main reasons why I choose dividend growth investing as a strategy to retire early. But hey, there's more to that if we think about dividend growth investing. Because did you know that um, just dividends alone are over the years and over the decades have been a really large contributor to the total return uh, of, of, let's say, market returns of investing. So just look at um, even at around... On average, from the 1930s to 2017, 42% of the returns was generated by dividends. In the 2010s, yeah, in, the, in the last decade, it was 17%. Don't underestimate this. So if you would have not invested in dividend stocks, uh, you might have lost out of, on 17% of real, inc uh, real return on your investments. At the same time, I also would like you to know that the, um, I said, dividend growth investing has generally outperformed any other types of investing. I know that at the moment growth stocks are really hot, but you know, after the dot-com crisis in 2000, many of those companies went nowhere. It took Microsoft or Cisco, I think Cisco didn't even reach it yet, but more de than a decade to get back to the level where it was. Well, the Johnson & Johnsons of this world, the Unilevers of this world have been just chugging along and increasing their dividends year over year, year over year for the last several decades and growing, growing the income for income investors like myself. And it has outperformed this way of investing the S&P over time. I think it's something uh, good to uh, remind people of because now we're living in an environment where many people are in tech stocks, but this is just a snapshot in time. We don't know where the market will be in 10 years from now. But dividend growth investing will most likely keep giving you re growing returns year over year. So there are some 
downsides also when it comes to dividend investing i think really specifically in europe here if you want to for instance invest in a company in switzerland you pay a high tax you pay 35 percent there so not every company that you might want to own will, will be of interest to you a second f thing is if you decide to uh, mainly invest in ETFs as an example, the, the SPDR dividend uh, aristocrat ETF. You need to know that their current starting yields are historically low, around 1.8% 1, 1 to 2%. Um, this means that also for your calculation, if you would start to invest with an average um, dividend yield of 1.8%, it will take you much longer to, to grow your snowball, to reach your, um, I would say, dividend expense uh, crossover point so you need to be aware of this there it's not the most perfect environment to let's say uh, compared to 10 years ago because we are in a market which is quite highly valued um, at the moment but having said that this is the, also the power of dividend investing you need to invest every month your savings every month your savings it doesn't matter then really so much whether the market is high or low because this is what we call dollar cost averaging and this consistency is is key to investing okay so how much do you need then to retire early and how long will it take let me show you this with an example so what i've done i've created a calculator for my uh, for my readers on europeandgi.com so if you go here to the resources page you will see here an investment calculator it's a g sheet i created for you you can just open it create your own copy that's what you do in the file and then make a copy i don't need to do that here but in this case if you create a copy you will save it in your own gmail account but hey, let's go here. So what we have here, we have three tabs here, variables that we will that I will show you that we need to enter, the freedom dashboard, it will give you all the metrics you need to know. And here are all the calculations. So don't touch it until, unless you really understand what you're changing because it might break otherwise the calculator for you. So what are we going to do here in the variables? We look at the expenses first. So let's assume that our monthly average of expenses is 1,800 euro. Let's also assume that there is inflation. So our expenses on a yearly basis will grow with 2%. We also assume that we are starting our portfolio, our dividend growth investing journey now, 1 January 2021. And I have some savings already on my bank account for which I want to kick off my investing journey. So I'm going to invest these 5,000 euro today into the stock market in dividend growing stocks. So, but then it, what I mentioned before, it's also about consistency. So every month I'm able to save 750 euro. So this assumes that I'm making 2,550 euro. I think that's quite realistic for someone living in the Western part of Europe. At the same time, I'm assuming that I'm getting a bonus of 3,000 euro approximately and other windfalls um, that will help me to invest once a year an additional 3,000 euro. At the same time, my expectations are that my dividend growth portfolio grows with 6% per year in capital appreciations. And this is not unlikely because if you look at um, uh, the S&P 500, what I just mentioned, an 8%, I think 6% is really on the conservative uh, side. At the same time, I'm also assuming that the money that I put in the market here, the 750 euros every year growing with 6%, which means, for instance, because I get salary increases from my, from my work or, or I'm able to save a little bit more because, for instance, I, 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 I'm not paying off my mortgage anymore. Anyway, many reasons could be here. I, can, I will do a future video about that. But 6% per year, my monthly contribution is growing. This is not unlikely because I went from 25% savings rate at the beginning to 57% now. So it's no joke. Um, I also assume that the average dividend stocks that I'm buying have a yield of 3,25%. Um, I'm also assuming that my annual dividend increase that the companies pay me is around 5%. This could be also 6%, but again, I want to be a bit conserv conservative here. Last but not least, I assume that my dividend withholding tax rate is around 20%. So now that we know these values, how long will it take for me to retire? And this is what you will find here on the Freedom Dashboard. With these values, as you can see, I would retire on... Uh, 1 October 2041 and this assumes of course the withholding tax being deducted um, my monthly income will then be around 2700 euro as you can see and it will take me 20 years to reach financial independence and retire early at that time I will probably be a millionaire because my stock portfolio will be over a million euros while I have contributed into the stock market around 470,000 euro 
And here you can really see nicely the graph. And this is exactly what I mean with the snowball. In the beginning, in the beginning, it takes a while. And typically we say the 100, first 100,000 is where you really start to benefit. Because once you have 100,000 euro uh, in portfolio with a 3 to 4% yield, effectively your cash contribution is already increased because we are reinvesting this divid dividends continuously. And by that time you will have like around 3000 euro that every year adding on top of your, uh, your, your monthly savings into the stock market. Now, of course we can be more aggressive here because uh, if we would go for a 50% savings rate, let's say that you can start already with a 50% savings rate, you will see that it really speeds up your, um, uh, how you say it, your, your retirement age. In this case, I think 50% uh, is already on the high end, high end. So I will also assume that I can only grow 3% more. But hey, if you're performing well at work and they keep giving you nice uh, salary hikes, then it's not unlikely that you can grow to 60, 70 or 80%. There are enough stories out there. In this case, you will see that you reach retirement, uh, early retirement in around 15 years. You will need a little bit less money by that time because also inflation is not so far yet as after 20 years. So here you will need 960,000 euros to, to be able to, to have a monthly income of 2,400 euro and you will be able to retire in 2036. So a lot depends on your uh, how aggressive you are and how frugal you are with your savings rate and how much money you can put every month into the stock market. But with this, um, I think you have a practical example of, of how you can retire early from the income of dividend stocks. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, just hit the like button, subscribe to this channel. There are more to come of these kinds of videos. These will be lightweight, I hope easy enough. And for now, enjoy the remainder of the day. See you around. Thank you.